Emma, you love talking about this. What? One of the students asked, how was your life affected by the Great Depression? Very poor. <laughs> um, That's all she's got it, man. No, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I were all, we were all very, very poor. poor. <laughs> I mean, get it over here. Get you it. talk about being poor. <laughs> this was in the um, 1929 plus. I was born in 1934. It was still on. And I'm telling you, you don't know what poor is. You, we had no shoes, we had no clothes. We had to go to outlets to beg to get clothes to wear to school. You wore your school, one day you button your sweater up the front, and the next day you button your sweater up the back. So it looked like you had two separate sweaters. <laughs> Everybody was just as poor as you were. Everybody was poor. The food, we ate. We had ketchup sandwiches. I remember that. <laughs> Ugh. There, there, there was no money. Everybody, and nobody what, had anything. Let me tell a story. One time in our house, somebody lost a nickel, and that was the last nickel we had in our house. I don't think the kids today could realize how much a nickel was in those days. Right. What but, it bought. But were people unhappy, Graham? No, we weren't happy because... It was, it was a, you know, we rode our bicycles, we played hopscotch, we played baseball. Kick the can. We played in the fields. Uh, I lived in the country. In the country, the tramps, who were poor people, used to sleep in cardboard boxes. Today, they wouldn't let you even go near a tramp. We used to run around, kick the cardboard boxes, and the tramps would laugh at us. It, nobody bothered anybody. Everybody was nice to everybody. It was, it was a, like I said before, it was a very simple world. The and real everybody thing is, got I along. think we, we all liked each other. We respected each other. And I think that's why we were able to, con we were able to put up with some of the inconveniences that we had to suffer. Mm -hmm. One of the kids asked if you had ever listened to one of FDR's fireside chats. All the time. And what was that He like? had the nicest voice. And of course, the great speaker. we'd all sit in a group in the house around the radio. And he always started out a certain way, with a certain way that he had his voice toned. And it was perfect. All right, another thing, you know, FDR had polio. That's infantile paralysis. Therefore, he was always in a wheelchair. He always had to have someone help him. And he was a great president in spite of his disability. What were your schools like when you were young, growing up? Our schools were very, very strict. And we Did you both go to private school? Public school. There were no private schools. <laughs> there was just a school, and that was it. So I went to a Catholic school. Oh, Mary went to a Catholic school. Yeah. She must have had a nickel. I, I went to a Catholic school. It was a dollar, a dollar a month it cost to go there. Did they hit you? Huh? No, Did they hit you? Never. Did they never. hit anybody? Because I was good. Did they hit anybody in your room? I think they, they did it correctly. Hit somebody on the hands. But nothing bad? Were. Yeah. Aunt Graham, did you see people get hit? No, but I do remember when I was in the seventh grade that there was a boy who always got in trouble. <laughs> and the, the teacher could not keep her eye on him. She made him sit underneath her desk <laughs> and he had to sit there all day long i still remember that and then you know when in where i went to school if my brother made a mistake they'd make him come and sit in class with me and i would be embarrassed because he was sitting next to me no that's terrible terrible isn't it <laughs> so terrible okay you wouldn't dare let's switch gears again do you remember where you were when we first landed on the moon? Did you watch that on TV? I remember. I was in Melrose Park. Sure. I, I was three, in Tony three, Ross. Yeah, I had three small children. Uh-huh. Uh, there was a great day. Oh, yeah. The whole thing was great because we watched it from beginning to end. Because, yeah. see, now we have TV. You know, all these other times while we're talking to you, there was no TV. There was no TV until the 50s. And uh, so the moon was very, very exciting. Do you remember where you were when Martin Luther King got shot? 
With who? Martin, Martin Luther, Luther King. King. Yes, uh, I was at uh, I was at work. Which was where? Downtown Chicago. And uh, there was a lot of rioting in some of the areas, and a lot of fires. Everybody was uh, allowed to go home early from work, and I took the Northwestern train, which is now called a what? Something else. Here. Some blue line or something? Yeah, and they didn't stop at all. They went all the way to, all the way out to the suburbs. Because there were riots and things. Because there was rioting, yes. Because people were so upset. Right. Um, how did let's since we're going kind of in chronological order, how do you think the world changed for women since? Um, oh, it has changed a lot. We were almost like second-class citizens. No, I, the man was the boss, and that was the final line. But today, women and men are equal. Aunt Mayor? Yes, I would say that, too. Although I think the men still respected the women, I wouldn't say they, do, they didn't. But I do think that a man's salary was based on, he was the head of the family, and therefore he got more a larger salary because of that. But there was another point too, little Trish. Now, there was another point. Women stayed home and took care of their children. The men went to work. Also, the men had an advantage. They got to go to college. Uh, you know, they went. We went too, but we never went as far as they did. Aunt Mary, what did you tell me about when women in your office were pregnant, or when they got married, they had to quit, or something? Oh, well, they would allow them to work until their sixth month. But some of them, I think, fibbed a little bit because some of their six months were pretty big. <laughs> I, had one, I had one working for me one time. This was during World War II. And I, I let her go home early. I says, go home, go home. I was afraid she, I was going to have to deliver that baby. For the second time. <laughs> How was it when the war was over finally? It was the, one of the better days. Yes. We all right celebrated. There. Yeah, we all celebrated. And we had these uh, little cuts that they had from the key punch machines. And we used that for confetti. And we had a good time. We all went downtown in, the, in Chicago and threw these, this confetti all over. And everybody was happy. So happy. Because we won the war. And what do you think was the scariest moment in history in your life? In my lifetime, well, the bombing of Pearl Harbor was very, very scary because, like I said, everybody was gone. Uh, I remember, too, like Mary said, I remember JFK's assassination, uh, Martin Luther King. Uh, you know what one of the scariest parts were at the end of the Second World War when they bomb Japan with the atomic bomb. Mm -hmm. That was that was really, really scary. Why? But they had to make a decision to stop the war and uh, at that time the president was President Truman because President Roosevelt had died and they were just tired of this going on and on and on and they just ended it all. How do you feel about that? That's a very difficult question to answer. That was, and I'm sure that the president felt the same thing, but that was the end of the war. And today, Japan and the United States now are very good allies. In fact, the Japanese want to have the Olympics, and so does the city of Chicago. We'll see which one wins. <laughs> Aunt Mira, how did you feel about the atomic bomb? Well, I thought it was, I, I thought it was, an awful dangerous thing, but it, it was a thing that they I'm had worried. convinced us we needed it to end the war. And rather than have a lot of people die, we thought this one bomb would be the important thing. You know, and, and, and you know, that's why today we are trying to protect the world for have to, to not have weapons of mass destruction or we won't have a world. But we have them. I know, but well, nobody needs to. Um, 
I have three daughters. One of my daughters is Tricia DeFazio's mother. <laughs> they went to St. Paul Lutheran Grammar School, because we're uh, Lutherans, and they went to Walther Lutheran High School. You might like this story. In these years, all the kids in all the schools were white. And Walther High School... All the schools in Melrose Park. Yeah. Walther High School had their first black student. Her name was Rhonda. And the other boy's name was CJ. When we had programs at Walther High School, these two students lived in Chicago. Naturally, it was very hard for them to get back and forth. They had to take public transportation. Therefore, CJ and Rhonda stayed at my house at night in Winston Park, this is where the same house where my daughter lived and where Tricia was born and where she lived. And to this day, my daughter Peggy DeFazio still contacts and contacts with CJ, who has a great job. I'll have to find out which job it is. And Rhonda also is very well educated and has a great job because they went to Walther Lutheran High School. Not that some other schools just aren't as good, but I want you to know that we were all great friends. And they were the first... Um, Blacks at Walther High School. And to stay and sleep overnight. Probably because, park. I mean, they could have slept somewhere else, I suppose, but I decided that they wanted to stay by me. Right. Very good. Aunt Mare, let's talk a little bit about all those crazy hats you had in your... Hold on. Okay, go ahead, Aunt Mare. Fashion. We wore hats, and the first job I had, I'll be honest to say I had never gone downtown in Chicago, and my father took me downtown so that I know how to, how to find my way down there. <laughs> Not the way the kids are today. I used to wear high heels, Hat and gloves. Oh, yeah. Sometimes with the elves and, and the buses and things, my hands would get so dirty that my gloves were filthy by the time I got downtown to work. But we always dressed up with high heels, yeah. hats, gloves. And I'm sure that did wonders for your feet, huh, Graham? Oh, my God, they all had corns and bad feet. <laughs> toes were all squashed together. And then we went all these years with nice flat shoes. Now all the models are wearing these high-heeled shoes again, mm -hmm. so you students pay attention to this, and 20 years from now, these people with that will say that. And you know what, too? Aunt Mare. Aunt Mare, she don't talk. Aunt Mare and Uncle Ray. Uncle Ray. For listening to her because she's gone to school horrible to her. They will not stop talking and she thinks that